as you can see here, we have a index page where we can log in or sign up. If I choose log in, I'm brought into a login screen, which I can then log in. And when I'm logged in, my email is displayed. And now a log out button is displayed instead of, I'm taken to the same page, but instead I have a log out button. I can log out and I can also sign up. And after I sign up, I am then automatically logged in as with a different email and I can still log out, but I'm on the same page. So my page is recognizing if I need to log in or log out. Pretty cool. everybody to another video I hope you're having a good day I hope you like that preview then that's what we'll be making in this video we'll be making a simple logout log system with encrypted passwords using the devise library which is really easy and takes care of all your login and logout functionality right for you and all the helpers it provides gives you a great insight in how to make an awesome website where you can have user information and you know we'll get into how to allow payments and how to do cool subscription things in other videos. So right now I'm at the library Devise. It's a GitHub link I'll include it in the description below. And what Devise is, is an authentication system for Ruby on Rails, okay? So right now I've created a simple Rails project and I've already, already put my terminal into it. If you can just open it in your folder structure if you want, I'll have the command on how to make it, it's just a Rails new command and I saved us the time, but without further ado, let's get to actually using our device gem. And the way you can use this gem is you can sim you simply just can add it to your gem file. I'm using Rails 4.2, if you haven't noticed. And then I can run bundle install. So now we can see here that we installed device It's right here at the bottom, I can't even find it. And now that we've installed device, we can actually code in it. And so the first thing you need to do, it's in the documentation, is you need to install device. And so you can do this by running rails generate device colon install. And so this will run a lot, this will run the config files for you and initialize device. And it will give you three steps to do. One we can skip, but it's essentially, if you want to do mailing, you need to tell the actual email the action mailer class about your where you're sending the emails from in your in your local computer case local host at port 3000 two you need to set the root url of your page which we're going to do three you can send flash messages we'll do that in another video which just tells you you entered your password wrong this is not a valid username stuff like that and then to generate device views for customization which we won't do in this video you can do step four. So we only are gonna do step two right now, okay? So the way, first thing we have to do is we actually have to generate HTML files for our route to go to, and we'll do that by generating a controller really quickly. And we're gonna do home and index. So I'm just gonna quickly make one HTML file. You can see it was created right here. And so now I'm gonna go into my actual folder structure you can just open it up in any text editor you want. I'm gonna to go to my routes file, very important, and then I'm gonna set my root to home hat action index. So that's what the colon really means. And I'm gonna save that there. And then now I'm going to open up that index file that was created. And before I do this, actually, I'm going to go back to my terminal here, and we need to do one very, very important thing. And what that thing is, is we actually need to create our model for logging in. So we need a user or an admin that allows us to log in. So we basically need a model that stores our email, our password, when we signed in, how many times we've signed in, and device takes care of all of this for us. Again, look at the GitHub page for more information. But the command for this is rail g device than your name. So I'm going to call it user. Admin is a common name, but what your the name you choose here is very important because many other things will be different from past this tutorial depending on if you choose the same name as user or not. So, there you go. 
our migration was created and we have devised for users in our routes. So now I need to run rake db migrate. And this will put our put our schema and update our schema and allow the users to be created. So now we're going to do another thing. We're going to see what routes, what links we can go to with our new device user. And we have a lot more. We have new user session, destroy user session. So where a session is when you log in and a registration is when you're signing up. So session is like, you know how you get on Facebook and you don't need to sign in every time? That's because you have a session with Facebook. And registration is the first time you've ever been on Facebook or the first time you're registering, register for an account. Now, if you note, you have special things here. You have new user session. We cho chose our model as a user. If you made it admin or account, then you would have new account session, um, destroy admin session. It would be based on whatever you called it. So that's important to note. It's not always user. It's whatever you called it. So that's a nice thing about device is it, you know, it molds to whatever you name it. Okay. So now that we've got our routes set up, we actually need to allow for the user to be able to log in, log out, and do all that stuff. So right now I'm going to go back to my index file and we're actually going to set up our little authentication system. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write some HTML. So we're going to make a unordered list with the UL tag and then we're going to use the device helpers, which is very nice. And what the device helpers do is they allow us to check if the user is logged in or logged out. So we're going to have an, I'm going to have an if statement here in ERB, which checks if user signed in. So this just checks, Hey, do we have a session with this user or has this user ever been to this website before? And the other thing we're going to do is we're also going to have an else block because The user will be signed in or will not be signed in. We want to do different things based on that. So if the user is signed in, we are simply going to have a link to sign out because the only thing you should be able to do when you want to sign in is sign out. So the way we do this is we want to destroy user session path. So our link to is going to destroy the user session. So we don't have a session established with this user anymore. So when they come back, they have to sign in. And so we're going to call the delete method so that the Rails controller or the device controller, which we don't even need to write, knows that we need to destroy, delete the user session. Otherwise, we have two options if the user is not signed in. And these two options are what we're going to do next. And what they're going to be sign in and sign up. So sign in is if the user has already signed up. And that way we just need to make a new user session path. Boom. Okay. So with the new user session path, it's whatever we'll be able to log in again. And then with the sign up, put it in the capital, we get new user <coughs> registration path, which we went over in the rake routes file. Okay. So if the user is signed in, note that all the users here would be flipped if you named the model a different name. So it could be if admin underscore signed in destroy admin session path. But right now, if the, if we're signed in, we can sign out. That's the only option. Otherwise we can either sign in or sign up. Okay. So now I'm going to save this and I'm going to go up to my other terminal and I'm going to run rails S. We're going to start our server. I'm going to cross our fingers and hope that this all works. And we're going to go to, I'm going to refresh my localhost because of the tutorial I showed you has changed now. And so now we have two links. We have sign in and sign up. So we haven't created an account here first. So let me do that. So let me make it aj at vt.edu, make my password password. And now I'm going to sign up. And when I sign up, I now have, I'm at the same page I was home index, but I only have a sign out image because, well, I'm now actually signed in. And something else we can also do is if the user is signed in, we, we can actually display the current users dot email. So current user is the user signed in. So we don't have to find them or query for the user. It's automatically, it's automatically taken care of by device. So we can get the current user dot email. 
when we're only when we're signed in. And boom, I refresh the page and now I can sign out or view my email. So then I can log out and let me try signing in. So it remembered me, I can log in and boom, I'm back to where I was. And let's see if I sign up with a different email. I then see my different email there and I can sign up. So every user could then have different content. You know, you could have things. You can change the models, the user model, to have different information to store maybe news data or whatever data you wanted to to take care of your accounts. And we'll go over that later. Well, guys, this is a pretty basic login system, but I think you can do a lot of damage with it. I hope you guys have a great day. Have the best day of your lives. Give this a like if you really liked it. And let me know if you finished the end of the video if you made it all the way to the end, and that's it. Have a great day.